So ladies and gentlemen, as we celebrate this day, the issue of KCDB and all the development projects which have been initiated by this uh, program at our coastal area, it is time to take stock and see the successes, look at the gaps which existed during the implementation of these projects, document them and see how we are going to fill in the gaps and enhance the, the successes which we have experienced uh, so far. I wish specifically to take this time to thank our development partners again, more specifically the World Bank, for not only funding some of the projects, especially at the coastal area, but there are very, many projects the World Bank is funding in this country, both in the fisheries area and also in the agricultural, uh, agricultural area, despite other uh, funding which they do in other sectors of our economy. Uh, we are told it's as, as many as 124 projects which have been implemented in the coastal area. That is massive. In whatever way, we want these projects to transform the livelihoods in the area. And we would wish, and we will be visiting the area to uh, visit as a follow-up on this program so that we can ensure what other support mechanisms need to be put in place to see such a massive project really contribute in transforming lives in, in, in the coastal area. And so, for me, it's an excitement when I see a successful program like this, because I know, in one way or another, it is transforming and changing lives of our people. We would want much more of this, we would want much more of this to happen in other areas of our country as well. So with those very, I don't know many of you remarks, ladies and gentlemen, I think it is now our, uh, my humble duty and responsibility to launch this video of our documentary of KCTV. Thank you. Kenya's coastal zone. It seems prosperous and fertile. But looks can deceive. There are economic and environmental challenges and insecurity in some areas too. In Kenya today, the coastal region is actually considered the poorest of all the regions. The poverty rate right now stands at 62%. We have poor communities that rely on the sea for daily bread, for fish, and they will overfish simply because they need to harvest to meet their daily needs. Infrastructure is coming up. We have mining, large-scale farming, and these are becoming threats to the marine environment in terms of runoff, of uh, sedimentation. Inland degradation associated with these development activities impacts directly on marine ecosystems and fish stocks suffer. From inland bridge to coastal reef, the whole landscape is interconnected. From a deforested ridge through the farm slopes to the lowland forest strip onto the mangroves the seagrass beds, and the reef. People, their livelihoods, ecosystems, and natural resources all are intertwined. Naturally, investment needs at the coast are not the same as in Kenya's highlands. The principal secretary outlines those differences. About the coast is not about coffee. It's also not about tea. It's about those crops, those water resources, the fishery, the aquaculture out there that would be used by the people as a springboard to economic development. The coast now has its own development initiative. Jacqueline Oko is the coordinator. 
the Kenya Coastal Development Project grew out of um, the need to bring government agencies together to address the challenges I've talked about. Through KCDP, seven government agencies have formed a platform to specially plan, coordinate, and monitor development covering both marine and inland resources. Action is coordinated by this platform, while communities are the main vehicle for implementation from ridge to reef. On the upper part of the ridge, the Shimba Hills National Reserve is home to Kenya's only population of sabo antelope. It is also rich in indigenous vegetation and biodiversity. This ecosystem delivers vital services, especially water, for coastal communities. KCDP's support has strengthened the protection of the reserve. But outside this conserved area, land degradation has increased in recent decades due to deforestation. This has led to loss of soil fertility and sedimentation in streams. KCDP addresses land degradation by protecting riverbanks with trees and promoting woodlots. This reduces the amount of precious soil lost, soil that is carried down to the coast where it pollutes marine ecosystems. Trees not only sequester carbon, but also build resilience into the landscape. While woodlots help protect the middle reaches of the landscape, there is one important activity that has not yet been sufficiently addressed. The farmers here, they are still using the traditional methods, uh, so there is a risk of uh, soil erosion. So uh, we need to adopt modern land husbandry technologies. So in, uh, in a scenario where the land management is poor, the sediments will uh, affect the mangroves. Uh, uh, they will kill the, 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 the seagrass beds and uh, finally also affect uh, the, 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 the coral reefs due to, to sediment deposition. Clearly, better farming practices need more attention. To support woodlots and increase vegetative cover, KCDP provides training and finance. For example, to Musitu Women's Group to establish tree nurseries. They sell seedlings. But the group practices what it preaches to. Each member plants trees at home. After planting the casserina and baobab, I saw that my farm became more fertile. These trees are not bad. They're good for the farm. One of the project's key strategies is to reach local communities through a targeted development fund, Hazina Yamaindeleo Yapwani, as it is known in Kiswahili. Farid Hassan leads HMP. So this process allows them, you know, to come up with the idea of what they want to do, and then you give them the resources for them to manage. So it's kind of empowering, it's enriching, it's actually an eye-opener for them. KCDP backs up this fund with research, technology, knowledge, and market information. It's development, but in each case, there are environmental benefits too. One project supported community is the Dabaso Creek Conservation Group. Here, Mangrove management and mud crab farming run side by side, and the resource center is the focal point for environmental education. 
We come here so as we can learn more about mangroves because at school we were not taught about maybe mangroves. We are just taught about forests. Emily is shown how mangroves play a vital role as habitats for marine biodiversity. They are breeding grounds for fish. Furthermore, they capture carbon as they grow and support honeybees too. With the newly conserved mangroves come livelihood opportunities. Members are trained in crab fattening. A community restaurant established by a previous project serves delicious crab samosas. This stimulates local tourism. Through initiatives like this, the project contributes to capacity building at the community level. The outer one. Inspired by the Baso, another community project, Commentsum, is also helped by KCDP. Here, mangroves are being systematically re-established. Old rootstock are removed. Surface sand is scraped away. Then seedlings from their own nursery are planted and nurtured. David Taura leads the group and his environmental awareness is evident. But he realizes there needs to be profit too. In order to maintain or to manage this uh, area, we are supposed to use this place sustainably and to use it sustainably then we have got to introduce some other things and that is how we came to start uh, fish culturing here which is an income generating activity to the community. But waste from coastal towns and villages inland poses a hazard. It can choke mangroves on the shore. So what can be done about that? A youth group where talent lives had the idea of setting up a community waste management service and the project supported them. At the moment where I'm standing, there was a very big heap of uh, waste here. And we managed with our, the target groups, we managed to close it down to the way you can see the place is green and clean. Now the rubbish is collected and piled in a central location where the council truck can take it away. Otherwise, this garbage would have been washed down to the ocean, polluting and destroying mangroves and marine ecosystems on its way. Another community highlight is the Kibuyuni seaweed farm. A market has opened up for this treasure from the sea. The project does not simply provide funds and infrastructure. Equally important, it has brought researchers to the communities. They have built capacity in cultivating the seaweed on lines, in harvesting, and in drying. All to ensure a high quality product. KCDP provides training, but assistance doesn't stop there. Links to the market are developed as well. Basically, seaweed farming in itself needs to be around cycle. Because producing the product, if you don't have a ready market, challenges the production process itself. And it's a market with good prospects. The last two times we exported, we sent to Malaysia because they have a, a processing plant there. So, but the final produce goes to China. Thank you very much. Okay. Timajashu is one member who appreciates the rewards. Kwa kweli huko limamano umetusaidia sana. 
truly see wheat farming has helped a lot and also my life has changed. When you have produced a ton, that is 30,000 shillings, you can do many things. Maybe pay school fees, some help the elderly to build houses, others use it if someone is sick. But to maintain profits, communities realize the role of a healthy environment. The one cannot go without the other. Further along the coastal strip is another income earning enterprise, the Baraka Conservation Group, run by women. They have been taught about aquaculture, making ponds, stocking with milk fish, feeding, harvesting, and freezing for the market. Currently, we see more benefits than before when we had the old pond. Now we begin to see that with the four ponds, they bring us good money thanks to the support of KCDP. Capacity building in such value chains is an important overall achievement of KCDP. The principal secretary emphasizes the potential for aquaculture. And these are uh, low lying fruits that uh, the people get into and change their livelihoods and their economies significantly. Between 2008 and now, aquaculture production has swung from the 1% to 24% in the country. And this is only utilizing less than 2% of the existing potential. Out to sea, on an island, the Wasini Coral Reef Restoration Initiative is a first for a community in Africa. They were guided in coral culture and already the reef is being revitalized after transplants. Coral is the source of livelihoods for the community. It brings fish and fish attract tourists. Furthermore, the coral reef helps protect the coast from strong sea currents and surges. That's doubly important as climate change hazards increase. KCDP has laid the foundations for an integrated bridge to reef landscape approach through the platform of agencies working together. It has supported the development of management plans for mangroves, sea grasses, coral reefs, and fisheries. As we follow the transect from the land to the sea, let's recollect what we have seen. Each of these initiatives is interconnected and all have an impact on the coast's bountiful resources. And it's clear that the communities are at the heart of implementation and sustainability. So this project is actually trying to build the capacity of the coastal communities who depend on natural resources. So by ensuring sustainable conservation of those resources, then the livelihood of the coastal communities is guaranteed. At the end of the process, they say, oh my God, we can do this. We never thought we could. I'm just hoping that this um, vehicle that we've created will gain momentum so that even as it closes, the bonds that we've created, the understanding that we have, will keep on moving forward.
the principal secretary is optimistic too. I think KCNDP has demonstrated to us how planning as one can become a very important tool for development so that the plan is implemented as one plan and not several different plans. KCNDP has prepared the coast region of Kenya for this type of approach and I think we need to support it. There are good lessons there that we need to pick and take to the next level.